And the yeah. interesting difference with you, I think, is that while you've been organizing your life in a pretty consistent manner, and in a traditional manner, I would say, you've also pursued your artistic pursuits simultaneously. And that makes it different because that's a place where you can have freedom within the context of discipline and where those things actually work very well together. You told me that we were walking the dog in the park like a couple of months ago and you were like, what, you know, what do you want for yourself in five years? And I was like, well, I want to have, you know, a, a good family life and I want to have a career that's meaningful and, you know, good generic answers. But you were like... <laughs> Oh, so you have feminine goals. <laughs> no, <it's> like, <laughs> I guess. Thanks, yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, well that, fit, that fits very well with the story I yeah, just told. I'm a too, high because, achieving woman. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, that could be worse. Could be worse. Yeah, yeah no, I'm happy about that. I wasn't offended. I just up in was a little surprising. When you're 40. Well, I mean, time will tell. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you do, please keep that private. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> I, won't, I won't be keeping that private. <laughs> oh, that's uh, funny. A anyway, um, my point was, I guess, do you have advice for younger people about how to, like, are you happy that you're settled down now with a kid? And Yeah, for sure. There's, has well, I wouldn't really have it. Freedoms or anything? Well, yeah, obviously, in some ways, it's limited freedoms. Um, but, well, I feel like when you get into your late 20s, or even mid twenties, you've probably been partying and doing random stuff and living with roommates for quite a few years already. You know, I mean, it, it, it doesn't, I don't think it remains interesting for that long. And even with, you know, people I know that are around the same age, everyone at around this age, or not everyone, but a lot of people end up settling down to a certain extent. And whether that's, you know, it's needing a change of some kind, whether it's deciding to travel the world or switch careers or go back to school or something. You, you can't just stay on the same kind of young person schedule forever. Um, and well, I found someone who I fell in love with and I always was attracted to women who wanted a family and I always, I always wanted a family. And so it, it fit in well for me. And I think that's fairly uncommon with young well, men. Do you think, do you I mean my, one of my observations of you and now you were very private, so I don't know all the details, thank God, <laughs> is that you tended to mostly have long-term, pretty committed relationships. Yeah. And do you know, that was the case with me too, generally speaking. Do you think that was associated with this conscious desire to have a family? I don't even know if it was. I think that I, well, I normally just chose women girls that i liked <laughs> plus what do you want to go out with a girl who's like i hate children that's super attractive well i never want to be like i'm just that just shouts infertile <laughs> yeah well it's not so bad if you don't want children and if you only re regard them as an impediment but if you're shouting it that's definitely a problem yeah that's yeah. a problem yeah yeah if you're shouting that on the street probably you should be best yeah. avoided but i don't know it was just it's just kind of how it worked out for me and and um well i was really lucky you know i met someone who I was extremely compatible with very young and our relationship mm. has only improved with time. How did you know, how did you know that that was going to work out? Well, I didn't. And we had ups and downs, right? Like we, well, yeah, we had our ups and downs and I didn't, I, yeah, I didn't know until really until we were married, I guess, weirdly mm. enough, like maybe not. Well, maybe, yeah, maybe that's fairly normal, but, but even when we were engaged, you know, I feel like we were still kind of feeling each other out to see if it was really the, the right path. Um, and, you know, we went through growing pains and all sorts of things that, that all couples go through. We fought a lot at times and, but the, the thing that I guess made me realize that it was, you know, a relationship that was built to last was that every time we did our relationship improved. Mm. Right. Yeah. And then it was happening right. less so and less. Whether you fight, it's whether you reconcile. Yeah, for sure. That's yeah. what it's all about, That's, right? It's, yeah, it's all about finding someone that is willing to put in the effort to improve the relationship, you know, over the years because people change and their needs change and their interests change. And you have to have a partner that's willing to listen and, and keep up with you, right? As Are you, you as good you at negotiating? 
Yeah, I'd say so. I mean, that's one of the things that we practiced a lot as kids, right? Yeah. And that was one of the things that made our childhood somewhat unique, I would say, was that we spent a lot of time being taught to negotiate. And so, yeah, it's definitely one of my, one of the skills that I'm, that's very useful in relationships, I guess, that I have. <laughs> and useful in other ways? No. <laughs> 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 uh, we did i got a question a curse leaps to mind <laughs> <laughs> uh, when you have arguments and negotiate we had a podcast last year with an fbi negotiator mm -hmm. and his take was that you either agree to something and the other person kind of meets you there but you don't meet in the middle What's your take on that? Like when you guys have disagreements, are there things where you're like, okay, I'll give a little and she'll give a little and then- Yeah, I think eventually that's what happens. But I think that when you- like, I think it's a Hegelian synthesis. <laughs> yeah, I also don't know what that means. <laughs> well, <laughs> how did you know? Yeah. Antithesis. Right. Synthesis. Yeah. Okay. Not negotiated middle. Yeah, right? okay, okay. Yeah, so, and that's, so that's it, what I was going to yeah. say. Uh, Obviously. Sure. Yeah, I was going to use exactly gonna the same Hegel words, too. Yeah. 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 Hegelian yeah. synthesis? Yeah. And there's no yeah. way of knowing that I wasn't going to. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, basically, you know, you, I, think, I feel like oh, one person has to basically give in a little bit at the beginning. Well, and, then, and then the other person will meet you somewhere along the way, eventually, once, once, the, once the negativity or the emotion goes out of the situation, right? I, I think it's very uncommon that people reconcile at exactly the same time. Right. It's almost always one person decides that it's, you know, either understands what they've done to contribute or is willing to put that aside in order for, you know, to have a real communication with the other person. Um, and then, you know, and then once the, once the emotion calms down and, and people can see more clearly, then you meet somewhere down the road, I guess. Down the road. Yeah. Well, yeah. I think that initial willingness to give in isn't that. It's, I'm willing to change as a consequence, consequence of this conflict. Now, that means I haven't specified the direction of change, but you, you would do that hoping that you could both attain something better as a consequence of the negotiation. Yeah. And you can, almost inevitably. And that's what you can aim for. It's like, let's make this better. Not average, not, you know, miserable in the middle, but be better for both of us. That's the point of a successful negotiation. It also means that the negotiated agreement will be stable. Because if you have to give in, let's say, and compromise, well then you're not really pursuing what you want to pursue. And so you're going to work at a counter position to that subtly and maybe not so subtly. But if you see, oh, this, is, this solution that we both generate is way better than either of the things we were doing before, that'll just sustain yeah. itself. One, one person has to trust that the other person is going to do the same thing, right? I think that's where it yeah. is because people fight, like get an actual fight in a relationship when the trust disappears about something, right? Yeah. You, either, you know, you, you assume that the other person isn't going to be able to move past it in some way or isn't going to be able to apologize in a meaningful way or whatever or it is. Or they were motivated in a way that wasn't... Right. It was untrustworthy in some way. Yeah, that's right. That's um, right. It is. And then, you know, it's one person at least has to decide that there's a, you know... A, a spark of trust that will come back, right? Yeah, that's in, kind in of that turn area. the other cheek. Thing yeah, exactly. And, and you there. don't have to think that the other person's right or anything. You just have to think that they are willing to actually come to a compromise of some yeah, kind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Solution and go. Yeah, yeah, certainly. I mean, one of the things that your mom and I have going for us is that fundamentally we trust each other. Like I really trust her to do her best to do the right thing, you know. And that can be rocky on the road there, but I know she's. She's working, man. She's working. And hopefully she feels the same about me. And so, you know, we decided when we got together, I had already decided that I was going to try to not live by lies, let's say, at that point. And I'd made a concerted effort to do that for a number of years. And when we first got together, that was part of our agreements, like no lies. And I don't, I don't, I don't think your mother's ever lied to me. So she really stuck to it, man. Once she said she, that was what she was going to do, she. That's impressive. Yeah, yeah, it really is. It's when she commits to something, she's committed. And that was so useful, especially when things got really rocky in our lives, when you were sick and when I was sick and when she was sick. <laughs> because 
<laughs> because we could trust each other. You weren't sick. No, I was just off like, the, the side. What the hell's wrong with you? Anyway, it's like, I'm not sick. Look at me over here. Like, we don't have time to look at you. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds about right. Yeah. 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 You know, well, I told you that when you were, I don't know how old you were, 10, something like that. When Michaela got so sick, I, I remember talking to you and saying, look, kiddo, we're up to our neck here and you're going to have to be sensible. And you were. It was, it was cool. <laughs> you almost got a tear. Well, I wouldn't oh, even if you got a tear. Uh, Me and my feminine temperament. <laughs> my feminine goals, your feminine temperament. Yeah. I know. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Wow.